And it was major for me. <laughs> it was this cat named Afu Ra, and he was with D and D and Premier and that whole kind of camp uh, with J. Rudy Damager and all them. Um, that was my first placement. My boy Rashidi, who I went to school with. Um, had been kind of shopping my stuff. This is when I like first started making making beats. Like I didn't start making music until I was 20, 23 or 24. Like I was actually, you know, on my way to grad school when I first started. So this is like, you know, within the first year and a half, two years when my boy Rashidi just started moving stuff around. And, um, you know, I got the call, I was geeked. I think the check was for like, I think it was like seventeen fifty or something like that, um, and it was dope, man. You know, dope. My first experience, I, I did the track in D and D, you know, Legendary Studio, and we, we mixed it, and um, I don't know, that was big for me. And after that, it ended up being like the next step from there was like the Rough Riders, and and you know, when I hooked up with Flame, my, my manager for the you know early part of my career. That's when it really kind of started going to bigger checks and stuff like that. Well, I was in school for music business at at NYU, and um, I was there because I thought I wanted to be an A&R. And a part of the curriculum was to have an internship at a label, and my internship was at Bad Boy. I interned for the part of the company that managed the producers. It was it's called Janice Combs, and um, basically, you know, they had Stevie J. They had all the hitmen, uh, Stevie J, I think D Dot, I think Bink was there, um, uh, Young Lord, all these like legendary cats, so, you know, under that umbrella. And um, you know, I got a chance to listen and and kind of see and kind of compare what I was doing at the time. Um, so while I was there at Bad Boy, I just you know, I saw the business aspect and I saw the kind of creative aspect and I just figured that, you know, it was a lot of ass kissing, a lot of running stupid errands and politics and stuff like that. So I just decided to just, um, you know, I never just, just stopped one thing just to start producing. You know, I kept interning and I was still in school. So I kind of had like, I had some time to kind of figure it out. Um, but the guy I was working for, his name is Damon Eden. Um, he, you know, I told him I made beats on the side. And he, you know, he told me to give him some beats and I sent him some beats and he ended up sending them off to Def Jam and got a lot of interest there by Philan. Um, that's how I met Philan Knight, who was my manager, like I said, in the early part of my career. So it kind of just was like an organic thing. It wasn't like, I never like, sat out to be a producer or anything like that. It just kind of happened, you know? And I, as I got more interest, I started to get better and better and, and it just happened, you know? For me, just grad school was about me just being in New York. I went to NYU, but that was the biggest draw that was in New York. So I got a chance to um, network with my peers who all ended up doing, you know, dope things. At MT, a, lot of, a lot of my friends went to, ended up going to MTV um, and just other fields, other cool fields that where I can I can call to this day, um, and you know call for a favor and stuff like that. So really, to me, school was about networking and meeting like-minded people, and you know, learn, you know, having good people skills. And to me, that's what life's about. I mean, I think you can excel in anything if if you got good people skills. And and um, so yeah, it was definitely important. I ne I had a, a broad education on how the music industry worked. But, I mean, just through their curriculum, but it was mainly about just the experience of meeting people and, and going, you know. I mean, because you really can't teach. You could try to teach it, you know. You could, you could teach as much as you can, but it all comes down to, uh, it's almost like street smarts. I mean, I'm not from the streets, but it's almost like, it's almost like being in this industry, you just have to know how to maneuver. Or, or if you don't, have somebody next to you that knows how to maneuver. So I think they they put so much emphasis on one track, like the track that's right in front of them, that they really don't see the, the big picture. Like sometimes you might have to take an L 
or sell a track for lower than you want to sell it at you have to start but you have to take those stepping stones and keep building a lot of people are like you know they're real stingy with the beats they don't get beats for free they're you know they're doing you know all different kinds of things that i mean that especially nowadays the name of the game is 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 quantity you know it's quantity and quality um it's not it's almost not not both it's i mean not one or the other it's both you need quantity and quality to really really survive out here so um because there's a ton of producers out here now so